Okay, we're ready to write a program to do a straight linear well. And we have a couple ways we can do that. We can actually drag and drop icons into our timeline and build a program that way. Or we can use our smart torch buttons. But before we get to that point, let's go down to the robot operation tab and open that up. We want to inch our wire out so that we can get out to a three quarter inch uh, contact tip to work distance. So you'll see at the bottom of that uh, robot uh, guided teaching tab, you'll see the wire inching in and out. We're going to inch that out, use our wellpers and cut about a three quarter inch stick out. And then there's also a purge tab here, so we can click on purge to purge the gas before we weld. And now we're ready to do a program, so let's minimize our robot operation tab. And up on the screen here, you'll see we have all of our icons that are available on this program. A lot of these are material handling. So on the left side, they've done us a favor by giving us other sub menus that will pare down the number of icons we're seeing. So the main ones we will use when we're doing programming are gonna be motion. We're gonna use the first two, the L and the J. And then under arc tool, we're gonna use those icons. So let's use the smart torch buttons first to do a program. So we're gonna grab this handle teach icon here and we're gonna drag it into our timeline. Now you'll notice that the robot operation tab popped up. The right button is always active. So when I click on the right button, it jogs between my different types of manual guided teaching functions. Now that I've put the handle teach icon in the timeline, I've activated the left button. The left button records points. So if I push it momentarily, I get an air point. If I hold it for three seconds, I'll get a weld start. Now if I hit it momentarily while I'm in a weld, uh, a weld function, I'm going to get weld points. When I want to end my weld, I'm going to hold it for three seconds again, and I'm going to get a weld end. And now when I hit it momentarily, I'm back to weld points in the air, or excuse me, air points. Now that I'm finished writing this program, I'm going to minimize my robot operation tab. I'm going to hit complete and acknowledge the handle teaching is completed and it's going to pull that icon out of my timeline. We just did that program to show you how to record points using the smart torch, but since they're all in the same position, I want to delete this program. So I can delete one point at a time by grabbing it and dragging it out of my timeline and it will actually delete it. If I hold it for three seconds, it will highlight it and now I can hit multiple points or I can hit a point on the far end and everything in between will highlight and now I can hit the trash can to delete it. So let's drag the handle teach icon up into our screen again. And we're gonna do a simple uh, V-groove well here. I don't wanna go straight in with my arm because I know that about halfway down I'm gonna end up in what's called singularity. And that's where uh, joints four, five, and six are all in line with each other. So we're gonna have to prepare for that. As we go down, we're gonna have to manipulate the arm so it's a little out of whack there. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use my dead man switch and I'm gonna hold it halfway down. I'm in free mode. And when I hold this down, I can now move my arm to where I want it. So we're gonna create a home point right here. So I'm gonna hit the left button and I get an air point. Now I'm gonna move down to an approach point and an approach point's a good thing to have because it makes sure that you're gonna clear the part and the clamps that you're not gonna take uh, a, a different way down that may hit something. This ensures it has to go through this point before it goes to the weld start. So I'm going to hit the left button momentarily. And again, I manipulated my arm so that I don't end up in singularity halfway down. Now I want to maintain my torch angle, so I'm going to hit the right button to go to translation. So now it's going to maintain my torch angle. I don't have to worry about it moving around on me. So I'm going to pull the dead man halfway down. I got my green flashing light. I'm going to go down to my weld start position and we're going to go down until the wire just barely touches. So we've already set our contact tip to work distance, so we're going to use that wire as our gauge for programming. So now I'm going to hit my left button, I'm going to hold it for three seconds, and now I have a weld start. Now I can move to my weld end, so I'm going to hold my dead man down to the first position. I'm going to move the arm over to the weld end and just touch the wire. I'm going to hold the left button for three seconds again and there's our weld end. 
back to moving the arm, we're going to go to a retract position again to make sure that we clear all the clamps and the parts. And we're going to record that point as a point in space, so a left button push quickly. And now I want to go back to free mode so I can go back to my home position. So I'm going to use the right button to scroll through until I get back to the free mode. Now I can move back to my home position. And I can record that point with a quick left button push. Now I want to pick up my tablet and I'm going to minimize my robot operation tab. I'm going to hit complete in the middle of the screen and I'm going to acknowledge that the handle teaching has been completed and you'll notice that it took the handle teaching icon out of the timeline. So now I have my program. All that's left to do is set my weld settings. So you'll see that point three is my weld start. If I touch point three, it's going to bring up the details for point three. I can choose a weld procedure and then a weld schedule. So the weld procedure is going to be a weld mode. So we're going to hit edit. We're going to make sure that our settings are set the way we want them. Now you'll see on the left side, weld procedure three is rapid arc. That's the procedure I want to use for this program. So I'm going to click the carrot next to it. It's going to uh, drop down that menu. The first thing I want to do is I want to click on the mode. So I can change this weld mode. I can click on that icon on the right side and I can either select from previous weld modes I've used. I can go to the next tab and I can set up a search based on the material, wire diameter, and gas mix. Or I can go to the right tab and I can directly enter the weld mode. So I already know I want to use 13 and we already have 13 pulled up. So I'm going to go from history, I'm going to left click the 13, I'm going to hit select. And it's chosen weld 13 as my weld mode. Now I'm going to go on the left side down to detailed settings. This is where I can turn on ramping if I want to use that. I can enable that right there. I'm going to leave it disabled for this demonstration. Then on the left side I'm going to go down to weld start setting. If I want to use a run in, I can enable that here. And then I have a drop down menu where I can actually set my wire feed for that. But I'm going to disable that for this. And then back to the left side, I have a schedule list. These are my schedules under this weld procedure. So I'm going to highlight schedule one and I'm going to hit edit. Here's where I would input my wire feed speed, my trim or voltage, and my travel speeds. So I've already got some numbers in here we're going to use. And then I can go back to the left side to the weld end settings. And here are my settings for my weld end. You'll notice there's a burn back setting with wire feed speeds already set and a wire stick setting that's already got settings. We'll leave those alone because the default settings are usually very good. If I go back over to the left side on the top corner, I'm going to hit that back arrow and that's going to take me back to my program. So I've set my wire feed settings. Now I just need to choose that weld procedure. So I'm going to use the first drop down menu and I'm going to go to weld procedure three rapid arc. And then I'm going to choose the weld schedule, schedule one. And you'll see here, there is the settings I set up previously. So now if I want to use that multiple times throughout this program, all I need to do is use the drop down menus and bring it back up. I don't need to do that every time. Now let's move on to the weld end. So point four is our weld end. If I highlight that, it brings up the detail screen for that. We can go back to our edit. Go to the left side to the drop down for the rapid arc. And we're just gonna skip right down to the schedule list. So we're gonna use schedule two for our weld end settings. So I'm gonna highlight schedule two, I'm gonna hit edit. And there I've already got some numbers in approximately half of what our wire feed speed was for the weld start. We're going to set our trim again at one, and then our delay time will be about half a second. We do not need a travel speed because this is going to stop in place at the weld end, and this is our crater fill. Again, I can go to the weld end settings, and here's my burn back and wire stick settings. Those are all good. So I'm going to go back to the top left corner, use the back arrow, go back to the program, in my drop down menu, I'm going to use weld procedure 3, rapid arc, and weld schedule 2. 
So schedule one was for the actual weld, schedule two is for the crater fill at the end. Now if I touch point four again, I'll deselect it, and now we're ready to run the program. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna click on the top right corner, and we wanna disable the teach pendant. If we're ready to actually weld, we're gonna move a few icons over up there at the top, and there's a torch that has a line through it, if you click on that, it will bring up another pop-up, which we see here, and I can choose Weld Enable. I'm gonna leave it disabled for this. And now, lastly, I wanna go down to the left side. There's a, at the bottom, there's a Play tab. I'm gonna click on the Play tab, and to actually do a weld, we need to be at 100%. I recommend that you dry run the program first at a slower speed, just to make sure that everything works and it doesn't hit anything for safety's sake but I know that this is gonna work properly, so I'm gonna to go to 100%. My teach pendant is disabled. Now all I need to do is press run. If you have the optional uh, push buttons on the front of your cart, you'll have to use those. If you try to use this one, it's gonna tell you that you can only do it by the remote. So we're gonna acknowledge that. I can hit the green button now. It's gonna actually run my program. My program is run, it's complete. Now I can enable the art and I can actually run it and do a weld. And that's how you do a straight linear weld.